Okay, so if you're having problems with Effexor or SNRIs, this talk's gonna be really helpful for you, okay? Anxiety, distress, it's common with these medications. We're gonna understand why. Let's get into it. Hi everyone, Jess and Al from the Psych Collective, Jess Agar, clinical psychologist. Al Griscato, psychiatrist, thanks for joining us. Okay, so we're going to talk about the difference between SSRIs and SNRIs today. Yeah, that's right. So, um, so well, SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Thank you, yes, right. you got it right. SNRI, serotonin noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor. That's exactly, that? okay, right. Good. That's exactly right. right. Okay, so let's let's kind of get into it. So, so okay, so what is serotonin and what is noradrenaline? We kind of need to just have a bit of a grasp on that. So these are these are chemicals in our brain that have sort of potent effects on, on mood, on even on behavior and reactivity, mm -hmm. okay? So, but they work in different ways. So yeah. we're gonna kind of try to understand a little bit about serotonin first, all right, and what that does, and then a bit on noradrenaline and what that does and the ramifications of these things. Okay. All right, let's get into it. Okay. So serotonin, so this is, this is kind of a, a really kind of critical um, neurochemical involved in mood. Yeah. Okay. And I've drawn, well, you've drawn little smiley faces here for me to show the sort of benefits that it has on particular problems that we might be having that are contributing mm -hmm. to mood. Okay. So sensitivity, how, how much we take things kind of, things get under or we take things really to heart. Serotonin can dampen down that sensitivity, so mm -hmm. we can feel a bit more robust. Okay, so less sensitivity is good. Well, in general, yeah. If you're super, super sensitive and the wind blows the wrong way and you're in a tears, that's probably not good. Okay. Okay. It's actually, I think it's helpful to think yes. about it on this spectrum that we've got. Okay. So, so maybe we we'll start here. Okay. So everyone's a bit sensitive. Okay. Yeah. Everyone's got a bit of irritability yeah. to some degree, yeah. some people more than others. It'll be based on temperament. But Absolutely. then if you've got the overlay of a mood disorder, then that's going to increase the sensitivity of the temperament that's already underlying. That's right. So if you are if you skew towards neuroticism, you've got more yep. sensitivity. Okay. If you skew away from neuroticism, you have less. Yes. Okay. All right. Now, if you're, if you're, um, so the most extreme end of that are people who are sort of hypersensitive, really, yep. really sensitive, yep. the wind blows the wrong way and they're in a real tears. Yep. Okay. Or, and I guess obsessionality kind of probably mm -hmm. falls into this domain, okay, of, yep. of high sensitivity, okay? All right, so this is sort of, you know, more or less kind of normal range sensitivity around here somewhere, yep. okay? Um, then you can have days where you're indifferent, or yep. certainly if you're taking um, medications that increase serotonin, it can make you feel a bit more indifferent about stuff, yep. okay? And that's not necessarily a bad thing, okay? Unless you're too indifferent and you end up Okay, no. so serotonin is gonna push you in this direction, regardless of where you start on this yeah. continuum from your temperament, and your mood disorder, serotonin is going to push you this way. That's right. But then the risk is too much serotonin. So if the dosage is too high, then we start getting up here from indifferent to numb to zombie. Yeah, yeah. So when people talk about my doctor had me on all these meds and I felt like a zombie. Yeah. It's basically you just maxed out to that. Yeah. End of okay. So the dose is too high. And yeah. kind of, is this the sense of doctors kind of desperate to help of my mood still not great? Okay, well, let's put the dose up. Not working, let's put the dose up. Kind of Look, desire to help, but I, I, not understanding this kind of mechanism? I, I think so. I mean, I can't speak for what of doctors course. are doing in their in their practices, but um, I think it's always, no, no one's there, I'm, someone's going, my gender is to turn you into a zombie. No one's, no. No one's saying that. People are more like, oh my God, you're really, really distressed. Let's do something to alleviate your distress, yeah. okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think sometimes we get pushed a bit further in this yeah. direction than is necessarily desirable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, I've got patients who will present kind of at this end of the spectrum. One of the biggest things they say is, I can't cry anymore. Down yeah. here, I was crying all the time, and now I'm on the dose up so high, I can't cry anymore. I want to cry. I need to cry. I've got to get it yeah. out, but I just the tears won't come. I yeah. can't even make myself cry anymore. Absolutely. Yeah, interestingly, if they skip a couple of doses, then they can't stop crying sometimes. Well, did, but but yeah. then we're into the risk of the withdrawal. That's the withdrawal. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that they do no, that, no, no, but no, that's no. what yeah, can happen. No, no. Yeah. Okay, all right. So sensitivity, it will push you along this way. So it will reduce sensitivity, but to a point where it actually starts to become maladaptive again yeah so ideally we don't want to get that far no. so we want to we, i mean if you're if you're taking a medication that is is boosting your serotonin uh, we want it so that it's improving your sensitivity and thereby probably reducing your reactivity okay okay All i've right. got so this serotonin's good for your reactivity yeah yep. yeah i've got this in copia what i mean by that is 
How much stress can you, can you, like if I throw a lot of stress at you, how well can you cope with that? What's yeah. your sort of resilience, okay, to, to stressors? Yeah, okay, okay. that probably doesn't really have much to do with coping skills themselves, has, but your ability to kind of implement, tolerate their distress, so then you could get to the point where you're putting in skills. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm yeah, that's, that's correct. So I'm not, I'm not talking about someone who's deliberately working on skills to, I mean, sure, it would help. So it basically, it increases your capacity to cope with a given stress mm -hmm. burden, let's mm -hmm. say. And it also helps you feel less defeated. Let's say, you know, life is crushing you. And that's a common reason why people end up feeling depressed, yeah. okay? Yeah. They feel less defeated on these sort of medications yeah. as well, okay? And uh, if you haven't had OCD, certainly it improves obsessionality. Okay, okay. okay. All right? And now these are, people talk about uh, antidepressants taking, you know, four to six weeks to work, Yeah. okay? So what it says, these things happen actually quite quickly. So I usually hear from my patients kind of, by about week two, it's kind of really, really good, and then it kind of drops a little bit, and then it starts to pick up again. Is that what uh, you see? Well, it's, I think that's very variable. Okay. Yeah, I think it's very variable. All these things start to improve quite quickly, so um, it, it doesn't have an effect on, on energy immediately. I think, okay. I think it probably does down, down, it does down the track for other reasons, okay? So I've said the effect on mood, I've said indirectly it helps people feel better. Now, the reason I, I'm, I'm positing this is that I think if your life is a mess, you've got a lot of chaos going on, you can't cope with all the vicissitudes that, that life is throwing at you, all the chaos that you're dealing with, okay? Mm. It's very hard to have a good mood in that predicament. Yeah. Okay, however, if you boost up your serotonergic kind of drive, taking these kind of medications, all right, all this stuff feels a bit easier to get along with. Yeah, which is interesting <laughs> because kind of serotonin is kind of known as the mood drug yeah. and serotonin is prescribed as this will help boost your yeah. mood. But what you're saying is, it doesn't actually work here, it works here, and then because of this, then that boosts. It, yeah, it allow, I think it allows you to have some positive emotion, but you've got, you've got to handle all the chaos in your life. Well, yeah, yeah. Now I'm handling yeah. the chaos in my life, I can have some positive emotion, that's where I get my mood lift. And this is where I kind of see where there is a, I mean, psychologist, right, I don't have the script pad, you've got that one, but where we see the balance between kind of talking therapies and skills work that I do versus kind of the med work that's more kind of traditional psychiatry. If they've got the serotonin on board, I see it as that then gives them the capacity and the space to then actually be able to front up the skills and do the work to learn the strategies to move it forward. Yeah, and then so, and then ideally take away the medication. Oh, once absolutely, the because yeah. then they've got the skills yeah. to be able to manage all of this themselves. Yeah, so, so it helps them tolerate the chaos. Yeah. So then they can learn some skills. Yeah, then they've kind of got the mental okay. space. And, then, and also then they can solve their chaos, okay? Depending and on the chaos. Depending yeah. on the chaos, yeah. Yeah, or okay. at least adjust or influence yeah. the chaos. Yeah. yeah. And then ideally, we don't need the serotonergic medications okay. going forward. So that's, I mean, but the, I guess the problem that I've got is um, a lot of the time it's like, here's some meds, go for it, that's it. Yes. You know, that I think that's a problem, okay? Because what ends up happening is you come back three months later, oh, it was working great for a while, now it's not working so good. We'll have some more. We'll have some more. We'll have some more. And yeah. you end up at that end of the yeah, spectrum. Yeah, but then when they also start kind of augmenting of adding in, okay, well, if the SSRI is not working, then we'll add in a mood stabiliser on top. We put an yeah. antipsychotic in, or we chuck in some benzos, yeah. Yeah. or... Or an S NRI. Let's chuck up. Okay, Let's right. add to the noradrenaline. Okay. okay, so tell me about the noradrenaline. There's not okay. as many smiley faces. No, there's not so many smiley faces here. So it helps with energy. So it's got a big smiley face yeah. for energy. Kind of noradrenaline, norepinephrine in the stomach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so no, that. you can kind of think of it as the as the um, is the neurochemical that's really sort of activating and very stimulating. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, so that's one way to think. I mean, that's, it does, it's got lots of effects, but that's kind of one kind of important effect. So My understanding is adrenaline is the hormone that's in the blood, nor adrenaline is a neurotransmitter in the brain. Have I got that that's right? That's pretty well correct, okay. yeah. It that's does, it, yeah, that, that's good enough. That's okay, good enough. Good. Okay, all right, so, so. Sensitivity doesn't do anything for it? No, it probably makes sensitivity a bit worse. Ah. Okay, it probably not makes helpful. it. No, not this. I mean, the, the serotonin effect is probably more powerful than the noradrenaline effect. Yeah. Okay. Depending on the dose as yeah. well. Okay. Because you, you, you can saturate your, your serotonergic effect. Okay. But and then you keep on adding more and more dose. You're not getting more serotonergic effect. Okay. Because the the SSRIs have got just this, but the SNRIs have actually got both. Yeah. So does one kind of start to cancel out the other, or are you saying this starts to actually cancel We're, out? Let's that? get into it. Let's get into it okay. in the next section. Okay. All right. So anyway, so reactivity. Noradrenaline makes reactivity worse. Is that because the system's more aroused? Yeah, you yeah you're ready, you know, you, you kind of, it feels like you're ready to roll, okay? Yeah. So if something happens that's distressing, yeah. you've, got the, you've got the extra energy that you need to get distressed yeah. about it, yeah. okay? Probably doesn't help copia or feeling defeated, probably makes obsessional symptoms worse. Yeah, right. Okay? I say probably, I mean, I think it's variable. Some people swear by some of these meds for OCD. I've never had a good result, I never prescribe it, okay? Um, mood, 
it, it seems to, it can help mood indirectly. So if you've got so little energy that you can't get out of bed all day long, mm. okay, well then that's going to get you to do some stuff so you can potentially experience some, especially with the serotonergic effect, start to experience some positive emotion and mm -hmm. getting some stuff done. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. that starts to help mood. So this will help with behavioural activation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, if 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 you've got if your problem is low energy, yeah, okay, because yeah. it can just cause restlessness as well, right? Yeah, right. Okay. okay. All right. So that's so that's the nor noradrenergic effect. Okay. Yep. So we talk about it's, how it's indirect. The other thing that the noradrenaline does, we've got a column here for dopamine. These chemicals, the, sorry, most antidepressants, the SNRIs, don't hit dopamine directly. Mm. Okay. But the noradrenaline indirectly increases dopamine. Right. Okay. So often when people first start these medications, yeah. they feel really kind of pretty good. Okay. But it doesn't last long. The problem with the dopamine effect is it burns out pretty quick. Right. right. So you can initially feel, you, you get a kind of burst of feeling good for a couple of weeks or a month or something, and then that runs out. And it's sort of like you, you, you're not getting as much enjoyment from the other things in life that you might normally find rewarding. It's kind of like that system's getting a bit depleted. Okay, so hang on. If we've got SNRIs that have got noradrenaline, so it's got both of these in it, and it's tapping into this, so we've got kind of the smiley faces here. So is this more kind of the long-term effects of staying on the SNRIs, if, if that's where it starts kind of tanking? Sorry, run the again. Okay, so well, kind of, you're telling me S serotonin and noradrenaline in the SNRI is the noradrenaline targeting the dopamine. So we've got happy face, happy face here, but yeah. sad face there. So is is it kind of starting off here and then kind of the longer term effects is when it starts yeah. thinking? Yeah, if, if sensitivity is the problem. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, sensitivity is a problem. All right, okay. it's it's probably it's probably worthwhile touching on what the sort of you know, side effects of these medications yeah, okay. might be as well. So if the medication increases your serotonin, um, sexual problems are super common. Yeah. Okay, super common. Um, I mean, partly that's kind of like, well, maybe I'm getting a bit numb. Potentially. Okay, so that, that might so, be yeah, part of the reason. Yeah, desire, but then there's also. But, but I think I think there's a direct effect as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, people are generally more twitchy when they've got a lot of serotonin on board. So that if you test someone's reflexes, they're very reflexive. Okay. Um, we all get that phenomenon from time to time when you're falling asleep. Often it's like you're having a dream and you have this little, yeah. it's called a sleep start, yeah. little, little jerk, and it can feel like you're falling over in your dream. Yeah. Okay. They become increasingly common as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, people get a little bit more sweaty. They can have gut problems, and we've already alluded to the numbing. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Right. Okay. The noradrenaline, so we've talked about the benefit and the lack of benefits, but um, increase of blood pressure makes sense, right? Yeah, that goes well, you heart kind of rate arousing makes the sense. That goes up. Anxiety, unfortunately, that can go up, which means more frequent panic potentially. Headaches, again, from the um, increase to the kind of uh, sympathetic nervous system system, probably. And sleep problems. Again, yeah, yeah. you can't sleep more arousal. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, now, the dopamine thing, I, I, again, this is sort of speculative, all right, but, I, but I, what I've Positing happens is you get reward activation to start with, you get quite tolerant to that quite quickly, and then possibly you get decreased reward sensitivity going forward. Okay, okay. so it starts off good, but you get used to it. I, I think so, I time. think so. So this isn't... Okay. Hence the question marks, okay. this is based on yeah, your yeah. clinical experience. Yeah, this isn't in the textbooks, this is just sort of what we see. Yeah, okay. okay. All right, so, All right, so, so that's kind of how it works. Now let's think about the individual kind of commonly used meds, and, yeah. I, and, and I'm kind of using Effexor as a, as a sort of case in point here, because at least in Australia, it's, it seems to be the most commonly prescribed. Yeah. I'll often get patients um, sent to me, whether an inpatient or, or through the clinic, and they're in an absolute state, okay? They've had their dose of effects or jack right up yeah. by some well-meaning person. Yeah, okay? what's that, a high dose of effects or? Um, 300's getting right up there. Okay. Yeah, two, I mean, I, I, let's say I, I mean, I will occasionally prescribe a or okay? It's not like, but it's, it's kind of, I'll occasionally use a screwdriver if I need to screw or screw in, okay? Um, you know, like you kind of got to pick the right tool for the right job. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, so Effexor um, is the, the sort of chemical name for this stuff is is venlafaxine. Yeah. Okay. So it's pretty serotonergic. So that's good. Yeah. It doesn't seem too noradrenergic. Yeah. Okay. So maybe that's not too bad. Okay. Yeah. All right. But the problem is we break it down to this stuff called desvenlafaxine. So it's the body's way of metabolizing it. And yeah. Yeah. Into yeah. It. yeah. Okay. And you eventually pee that out. But before then. Like seventy percent of the effects all that you take probably around there is is desvenlafaxine, which is available okay. as a separate drug called Pristique, by right. the way. Right. Okay. Now that's not so serotonergic. It's still pretty serotonergic, but but it's not super serotonergic. It's very noradrenergic. Yeah. Right. Okay. So 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 Effexor is a medication. If you've got anxiety, okay, taking Effexor, yeah. Okay. You might get some more 
uh, yeah, edgy out yeah, of it, okay? Yeah. But, you know, the, your sensitivity is ramped up, your reactivity is ramped up, you're more likely to have panic attacks and this kind of yeah. thing, okay? And I see, I mean, I had someone come in just last week, okay, on Effexor 300. They were pacing around, they were so agitated, mm. okay? The intervention there was reduce the dose of Effexor, you know? Do you then swap it out with something else? Well, we'll get, yeah, I did, this stuff. Right. Okay, and so we'll get to that in just a sec. All right, so, um, the, the next most commonly prescribed um, SNRI, at least in Australia, is this stuff called Cymbalta or Duloxetine. Okay? okay. But this is like, it, it's really serotonergic, so that's great, yeah. but it's also really noradrenergic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, you really kind of, it, it, it sort of has the sense of you've gone and got the foot on the accelerator and the brake at the same time. That's, yeah. that's a sort of clumsy yeah. analogy, but, but you're really, you know, you're kind of firing your afterburners here with all this noradrenaline. Okay. Okay. So, um, again, if you've got, you know, severe pain problems, you're stuck in bed, you've got no energy and you're super depressed, well, maybe that's what you need. It well, it'll get you out of bed. Yeah. 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 Okay. And what it does on dopamine, it's not completely clear. Like I said before, you know, it probably boosts dopamine to start with because of the effect of noradrenaline on that yeah, system. Yeah, this is so big, so the kind of, it's bigger here, but then it's like the come down looks like it's worse. Oh, I, look, I, again, that's speculation, yeah, but, okay. but I suspect so, all right? So let's talk about a much more simple drug to get your head around, okay? Which is, I, I use I use Luvox quite a lot, okay? Yep. Or Fluvoxamine is its other name, all right? Super serotonergic, yep. okay? It's super, super serotonergic, okay? So it's great, like in OCD, it's the bomb, right? right? It's, it's amazing, but it's also fantastic within states of high sensitivity, okay. all right? So it gets, gets people kind of moving in this direction pretty well, but yeah. okay? Now, it, it, it still has the potentially the gut side effects. It's, that's its most not notorious side effect. Okay. okay. Out of all of these medications, for reasons that I don't fully understand, it seems to have the least problems with sexual side effects. Okay. So it still has problems. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It still has problems. But it seems to do better than, than uh, everything else. Yeah, and it's sort of dose dependent on the on the sort of twitchiness, sweatiness, and so forth. Right. So okay. It's got a very wide dose range as well. So some people get away with a tiny dose. Yeah. Just nudge them up here. Yeah. Okay. But if they've got really bad obsessional problems, you can nudge them up, you know, three hundred milligrams or something like this, and they're they're up here. It's it's kind of I've never seen anyone get too numb off it. Okay. Okay. But yeah, I'm sure you could if you had enough of it. Yeah. Okay. So so that lady I was telling you about just now. So she came on this stonking big dose of Effexor. All right. Now we, we brought that down, okay, so we could bring down her noradrenaline amount, yeah. okay, and that resolved the agitation. But then you can start getting like serotonin withdrawal yeah. effects, okay. Yeah. So that's a problem. So I actually slipped in a little bit of this to compensate for yeah, that. Okay, well, Didn't need much, okay, and she was good as gold, okay, okay good as gold. Okay. So, so if you've got, so here's my thing with the SNRIs, okay, if you've got. If you're taking them and you're getting lots of agitation, yeah, okay, that may not be the underlying, you know, depression or whatever that's causing the agitation. It might be the, it might be the noradrenergic yeah. effect, okay. And increasing your and, and if you've increased your dose of Effexor, okay, and your agitation and distress is worse, okay, yeah. that's a huge, yeah. huge indication that this okay. is what's going on. So driving. go back to your treating health professional, whoever prescribed, talk to them about the side effects. Don't cut down your dose by yourself. Don't no, do that because no, no. the side effect of the withdrawal can be pretty horrendous. It, it, needs, to, it needs to be managed. Yeah, properly. and it needs to be monitored and it needs to be done kind of regulated and, and slowly, yeah. usually. Okay. Yeah. I feel like we should chuck in some sort of disclaimer to say that kind of as we're talking about which drugs we like and don't like, we yeah, have no engagement yeah. with pharma or kind of no financial research. No, no involvement, no, no kind of it's benefit just, of any of th these. This is where I get my headaches in my clinical practice. Yeah. Okay. When I inherit patients who've been jacked up to really high doses, yeah. and I've got to fix up that mess. Yeah. Okay. And um, yes, this isn't this isn't like medical advice. Go and do this. This no, is not talk at all. to your doctor. Not at all. Okay. This is this is what we've seen based on well, more so your clinical practice yeah. of however many years that is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right, folks. That's it. That's it. Um, it would help us a lot if you if you disagree with this. You think this is all BS. Please let us know. We want to hear. Okay. Yeah, maybe, maybe you're doing a PhD in the dopaminergic system, and you think well, what I'm saying is nonsense. I'd like Send to hear that. Send us an email. Yeah, yeah, we want I'd to like hear to about that. that. All right. Okay. okay. Subscribe to the channel. Hit like on the video if you found this one helpful. Leave us some comments and let us know your thoughts. Uh, you'll find us Facebook, Instagram, and the website, sitecollective.com. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Thanks guys.